This actually sounds like Archer, but shit. Oh, imagine if it was like, yeah, imagine if it was Archer, but, but took itself seriously. In ways that it's not supposed to. Yeah, Obliterated is the name of the fucking show. I saw the first, like, three minutes casually on my Netflix main page, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so bad. Is this for real? Did they actually make this? Why did they make this show? It is the worst show of all time. Oh. <sighs> Variety dragged this. Netflix's Las Vegas set action satire obliterated is nearly unwatchable. Yeah, what the fuck do they know? What do they know? They don't know anything. Projects like Arrested Development, The Office, and even The Hangover Film Trilogy have prompted writers to infuse hysterical beasts with satire as a way to examine the 21st century American society. These shows and films comment on everything from race and sexuality to working class. Cobra Kai creators, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg, and John... Josh Heald put a satirical spin on the action comedy Netflix's Las Vegas set obliterated. Instead of an uproarious commentary on the culture of drugs and drinking in the various factions of the U.S. intelligence community, obliterated is a baffling, nearly unwatchable hodgepodge of nonsense littered with penises and explosives. There's so many dicks. And massive ones, by the way. Like, just some of the largest dicks you've ever seen, both in dildo form and just, like, straight up on a human being. Um... It, it's not satirical, though. That's the thing. If it was a satire, it could be brilliant. Oh, my God. Every fucking day of my God fucking damn life. Holy shit, dude. One second. Just like my mom is, she's immobile. She can't move because she has a meniscus tear, okay? But that has not stopped her from ordering everything on the planet. Literally, just ordering. There is a steady sequence of, of non-stop deliveries happening literally at every moment of the fucking day. And she's constantly in fucking panic mode being like, Okay, I think I think I'm getting to a point where we're like my family's you know is is starting to get on my nerves a little bit. It's like we've we reached it. It's the three month period, or however long it's been, where I'm just like, okay, my quality of life is diminishing dramatically by the moment, and it's starting to piss me off. I've realized. Oh. Every waking moment of every day. There is literally a, a five-minute breathing period in between deliveries that my mom gets. I don't know how she does it. I don't know what she's ordering. I don't know how she needs so many things. I don't understand it. Nobody needs this many things. I promise. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Anyway. Penis thing reminds me of the time that my dad told me this show had that it's so much cock that some actors had to wear prosthetics. Anyway. So, um, as I was saying, the show that I'm shitting on right now called Obliterated is not satirical. It's very serious. The series opens, like, it's supposed to be comedic, but not in the direction that you think it is, right? It's supposed to be comedic, but, like, you're supposed to be laughing uh, uh, with the characters, not laughing at the characters or the American military-industrial complex. That's, like, those guys are playing a big role. It's more like, oh, look how our grunts let loose, but they still save the day. Don't you fucking, you know, don't you misunderstand it. However, given the subject matter of the show, you could technically straight up make fun of every aspect of it, but is there something as a hyper-hetero camp? This is it.
Series opens on the scorching casino rooftop amid a massive pool party. Seven members of an elite special forces team are finalizing a six-month mission to subdue a Russian bomb and save the city from being annihilated. No nonsense. CIA agent and squad leader Ava Winters, Shelley Henning, tries to keep the group on track while ignoring her irritating attraction to Navy SEAL Chad McKnight. Just on that name alone, you you can get a better understanding of how ridiculous this show is. McKnight isn't used to taking orders, and his determination to do things his way causes tension between him and Ava. Fellow SEAL team member Trunk, Terrence Terrell, McKnight's best friend, is an obsessive foodie with a secret. He's not even an obsessive foodie. He's just a big guy who loves to eat food. That's the joke. And also... His secret is that he's gay. He's a big black guy who's jacked, and but then he's also gay. So it's like, oh, I didn't expect it. Like, that's literally the whole... That is the, 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 the fucking juxtaposition, you know? The, ooh, so weird, right? Anyway. Um, NSA agent Maya Lerner, known as Tech Girl, is only in her element when she's behind a computer screen or openly lusting over McKnight's abs. Marine Sniper, which, by the way, literally, she says, oh my God, his abs are to die for. Which, to which I say, yeah, the dude is fucking shredded. Like, you gotta admit that. But very odd. Anyway, Marine Sniper Angela Gomez is focused on her trigger finger... Marine sniper Angela Gomez is literally Michelle Rodriguez if she was like four foot eight. Okay. Straight up butch lesbian who's angry, but one of the boys. And like every time she gets mad, she says something in Spanish. Okay. Like. It's like, it's like. The tropes are out of control. It's literally like watching the movie SWAT. You guys ever watched that movie? SWAT, this is that movie, but combined with like Fast and Furious, and then instead of having like actually famous people, they literally were like, let's find the least famous people we can hire for this role. Yes, she does say Dios, oh Dios mio. You know she does. Anyway, Marine sniper Angela Gomez is focused on her trigger finger and breaking the hearts of Vegas bachelorettes. Air Force pilot Paul Young is as straight laced as they come and is preoccupied with the distance between himself and his teenage daughter, who he's never around for. Overachiever, Asian guy in the U.S. Air Force. He's a nerd, guys. Finally, Army explosives technician Haggerty is as much as a wild card as the bombs he subdues. Despite a few missteps, the team defuses the bomb, completing their most long quest. However, before disbanding, McKnight convinces Ava to let the crew live it up for one final hurrah. He and Trunk throw a mushroom, ecstasy, alcohol-infused blowout involving more dildos and chaos than anyone could have expected. Yet as they're letting loose and McKnight and Ava are giving in to the long-brewing sexual tension between them, CIA Director Langdon calls to inform the squad that the neutralized nuke was a fake. Also, Ava's husband is dead. Ava had a dead husband, which is, I guess, relevant in the story, or maybe it will be. I don't know. Ever the perfectionist, Ava corrals her intoxicated group. Her husband didn't just die, though. Her husband had died already. Ever the perfectionist, Ava corrals her intoxicated group to get back in action. If there's any hope of saving their careers or the people of Las Vegas, the concept of obliterated is pretty hilarious. Watching intoxicated special ops agents try to make clean shots and put together a coherent plan on a seven-hour countdown should be comedic gold. I disagree. I disagree. It, it is not. That is such a really, that is such a bad plot. Oh my God, the audience score is 79%. That's it. I would probably give it a, a, a 79%. Actually, that's pretty fair. But, like, because it's awful. This actually sounds like Archer, but shit. Oh. Imagine if it was, like, yeah, imagine if it was Archer, but, but took itself seriously. 
in ways that it's not supposed to. Anyway. Storylines, yeah, regrettably, lazy jokes, one too many full frontals, and weary, wearying hour-long episodes make for a confounding show. Storylines including the will-they-won't-they they of Ava and McKnight were evident from the beginning. Maya's unrequited crush on the blonde-haired seal and her disdain for Ava is exhausting and childish. Paul seems to have just discovered he's an absentee father, and Trunk is labeled with every stereotype about big black men throughout the season. Literally, no penis is left unturned. What? I don't know about that part, but the other part is true. It's like Trunk's character quite literally is like, look at the juxtaposition of him being a big black guy, but he's also gay and really horny and really hungry. What if he was a really, what if he was a really hungry big black guy, but gay? Like it literally feels like AI wrote it. I'm not even kidding. What year did this come out? Just now. But it is it is from a bygone era. That's what I mean. It's a show that was made for like 2005, okay? If this came out in 2005, this would be the most popular show of all time. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, okay? Like 2005 is exactly when the show was supposed to be made and delivered. And unfortunately, it came out in 2023. Which is why you can still enjoy it. Anyway. So yeah. Obliterated has an ambitious concept. No, it doesn't. Yet instead of giving the fans texture beyond the surface of the glossy Vegas nightlife or compelling details of the characters' backgrounds, save McKnight and Ava, viewers are forced to meet the team where they are, which isn't a fun place to linger. Aside from a cocaine-charged camel and two clever one-liners, the series is puzzling, chaotic, and full of scenarios and stereotypes that lean much further towards the stupidity, stupidly offensive than a fun parody. If Obliterated had been sliced down to 30-minute chapters, moving the story along quickly, it might have upheld some of the wittiness. Herbert Schlossberg and Her Heald were going for. Instead, the episodes never seemed to end. Without real laugh-out-loud moments, the show is just one antic and explosive scene after another, never translating into a thrilling experience it promises. When it all finally comes to a head in episode 8, last call, the viewers left feeling like the only sober person in the room. And for many of us, that's a terrible place to be. I'm telling you, like, it took me fucking out when they did this. When they said, like, if the world knew what we did here today... And if the world knew what we did here today, they'd want us to party like the rock stars we are. But it's not even him. It's like what he says beforehand. What she, what Ava says beforehand. It's like, and you can't tell a single person about what we did here today. That's right. The American Special Forces and the, and the, you know, and the NSA and the CIA work tirelessly to stop terrorists, but they don't know. <laughs> I just love it. I love that you're shitting on the show while I've been getting served ads for it all over Twitch. I'm just saying it's awesome. And there's a lot of stuff like this, like, oh, yeah, these guys, these special forces guys, they're fucking American heroes, but they know how to party hard, too. They know how to fuck hard. They don't just work hard to save America, but they also fuck hard to save America, too. Look at this. Look at this. I love my special forces guy to be, uh, to be shaking the food and the drink with the weapon. And that's like, there's another moment there where it's like, uh, this is supposed to be like marshmallow, but it's the fucking, the corn, sweet corn thing. Oh uh, yeah. This guy. Okay. He's like candy corn, but like marshmallow. Where, like, everybody runs out. A bunch of, like, girls run out of the fucking hotel. And Chad McKnight thinks that they're there to celebrate him. Okay? 
He's like, oh, they're coming to celebrate us, real American heroes. Like, first of all, nobody fucking knows what they did. Okay, they killed a shit ton of Russians. Nobody knows that. And why are they in their fatigues on the strip? Nobody knows. That's really weird. But these girls run out. And he's like, oh, they're coming to us. And then they run towards Marshmallow, who's getting out of the fucking, uh, you know, out of the limo. And he's like, ah, uh, these girls these days, they don't have any respect for the military. They only care about these candy asses. That's what he says. And that's it. It took me out. That's when I knew I loved it. Also, the bad guys are Russian and Chinese. Yeah, there's like a crypto bro that's a bad guy. Chinese crypto, bro. Which I thought was fine. Um, this backhanded endorsement is more likely to convince me to watch this than any ad. It is so shit. And there will be moments when you're watching it where you're like, I can't watch this anymore. But there's a lot of sex and there's a lot of fucking and like the characters that are constantly naked are hot enough. You know what I mean? In 05, it would have just been anti-Muslim. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it, it's like, it's from a bygone era. In 2005, this guy wouldn't be Russian, he'd be Muslim. Uh, and you watch it with your parents? Just admit it sucks ass. I don't care about the sex. Wait, what? Just admit it sucks ass? Why is it always that, like, I got people in the chat being like, I own you. Like, I just owned you. Just admit it sucks ass. It's like, I just did. I literally haven't stopped saying it sucks ass. Like, what, what do you want from me? What, what do you want me to say? I just read a review that also said it sucks ass. I think it sucks ass. I'm watching it because it sucks ass. 